Welcome back to Starfish Sea Fishing. Today we're going to be doing a product review on the Diver Solstice 1830H. These are my own reels as well, bought out of my own pocket. Um, I'm going to do a little unboxing video, quick talker of the reel. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of an upgrade, I think essentially if you're going to be using it off the shore, although if it's a boat reel, I'd probably suggest you do it as well. Then we're going to be going down the beach, giving it a good cast and seeing how the reels perform. The fantastic reels. Let's uh, get on with the video. So this is the Diver Solstice 1830H. Um, cast aluminium body, absolutely lovely. Blue anodization on it is fantastic. Nice size wheel foot to uh, fit most rods. I think you'll get that in everything really. Absolutely lovely. Lovely big uh, clutch there. Nice and easy. That is the only plastic part on the reel as well. Um, these run off centrifugal brakes so they're not magged as you can see. People have magged them. You can either put a static mag in there or you can have um, send it off to certain people. We'll do a mono mag. The handle looks absolutely fantastic as well. You can adjust that and make that a bit bigger if you wish. Uh, EVA handle, absolutely lovely and it is crystal smooth. So smooth this reel, really is. There's a clicker, clicker system on it, nice and loud. The specs of the Saltis 30H are as follows. A 641 retrieve, so it will retrieve 39.5 inches of line with every uh, turn of the handle. So they really are good for rough ground, kelpy ground, rock marks, really good. Get your fish in fast. Uh, well, we've got 17.6 pound of drag in there as well. So they've, they've got plenty of power, plenty. So the Diver Salt is a very lightweight reel as well. It only comes in at 15 ounces, so it should be perfect for your lighter rods as well. Will hold braid. Uh, 20 pound mono on this reel here at the moment. So we'll be holding about 300 yards of line. So inside the box you get obviously the instructions which are quite good because they actually uh, cover the schematics of the reel as well so you've got all your schematics here so if anything does break you know exactly what it is handy to have keep hold of that in the box you have your tool working on the reel the only problem i've found is that the three screws you need to remove to get to the brake blocks are actually an allen key which they don't provide so bear that in mind if you want them to do this, you will have to buy an Allen key. If you're into your boat fishing and you just want to put a fixed uh, reel seat on, there you go. The first thing I decided to do is to uh, swap the line over for the brand of line I prefer to use. Uh, I like the yellow line, it shows up better in night time when night time fishing. Uh, we'll open the side plates up and get the brake blocks changed. So to undo the side plate we need to do one, two, three screws you will need an allen key it's not provided in the box so simply just take them out we don't come all the way out they just um, screw out until they're loose so we loosen the three screws off they don't come all the way out just just leave them past the end pull the clutch back and then we need to take this one screw completely out with the tool provided a little bit tricky with the uh, angle I'm doing it so we'll remove this. So before we take the side plates off, we're going to put a bit of tape around the spool itself to stop the line coming off when we uh, take the spool out. Otherwise you just end up with line all over the place. Just keeps it nice and neat. There you go. So we'll remove the side plate and remove the spool. Remove the side plate first. Put that to one side. Turn the reel over. Take the spool out this way very gently so we don't lose the two brake blocks that are on there. It comes standard with the two brake blocks. But even if you're not going to do anything to this reel, I'd advise you clean these brake blocks and clean the inside of the ring here. Because from factory, these are caked in oil and that's not going to help you cast in at all. So the first thing, we just need to remove these two white brake blocks. They're absolutely caked in oil from brand new not been used yet yet these reels so from factory they've absolutely caked them in oil they just literally pop off like that be careful you don't lose them but if you look at them now they're caked in oil 
and so is the ring inside here as well absolutely caked in oil you can see that on my finger this needs to be clean that is not going to help your braking power at all so to clean them i've got some lighter fluid and an egg cup i'm going to put the brake blocks in there give them a good soak to get the grease off take a cotton bud and just rub around the inside of the ring and give it a good clean out get all the air grease off that ring because that, that is your braking system you do not want it caked in oil simply take the brake blocks out the air lighter fluid after a couple of minutes dry them out on some paper towel then we'll wipe the inside of the ring out make sure we've got all the grease out this ring get a paper towel again clean it off and then reassemble the brake blocks so with most diary wheels the red blocks are the harder braking blocks and the white blocks are usually the softer braking blocks but in the Solstice 30, the white blocks are the bigger blocks and the red blocks are the smaller blocks. So I assume the white blocks are the, actually the bigger ones and these will make the real one faster. So I'd try both of them and see how you get on. So it might sound a little bit trivial to some, the degrees in the blade box and the ring when you get a new reel, but that is absolutely essential. The grease on there, you'll have no braking power whatsoever. So let's see how fast the reel actually runs now. The brake blocks have been degreased and cleaned. Let's see how fast these rails actually run. They are epically fast. We need to slow this down for, for the fishing cast. I'm not a tournament caster. I'm not going out on the field trying to hit 300 yards. I'm just trying to do a fishing cast. These things just don't stop. I've cast with them already. They just overrun on the cast. If you don't get your thumb on it, they'll just literally spill you out. So now we'll try the red blade blocks. Let's give this a spin. As you can see that from the from the off, it's epically fast. It's just too fast, far too fast. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a static mag. I'm going to prove two ways that don't actually work. I've seen recently, and I've found a way where it will actually work. So here we have one 10 mil by two mil M52 wear air magnet. So the first way that I've seen someone mag this reel is to put a magnet on the inside of this plate. So we're going to prove whether this works or doesn't work. So for this experiment, because I don't want to be losing my brake blocks, I'm going to actually take the brake blocks out just to disprove this myth, because this does not work this way. So we have a lot of people saying that you can't mag these because the spool's not magnetic. So let's prove that now. Yes, you are correct. The spool is not magnetic, so you cannot control the magnet with the spool. But the little spindle arm here, these two little pins, if you spin the reel and bring the magnet in, it does actually slow the reel down. So the magnet is being uh, working off the, the spindle arms. Feel that, it actually does stop it quite nicely. Which brings me to the other question. So anyone saying that you can just place a magnet in this side of the reel, it just isn't going to work. There's just nowhere, the magnet's nowhere near where it needs to be. So you can't just place a magnet in there like that. The spindle arms are inside of this ring. So I assume that when you do the monomag conversions on these, they actually remove all of this so they can bring the magnet closer to the arms on the spin on the spool. But that's not for me to say, I don't really know, I've never seen a monomag conversion, but you cannot do a static magnet on this side of the reel. So if you're looking to do a mag conversion on that reel on that side, I'd advise you send it off to someone professional who knows what they're doing, but you can't put a stacked static mag in that side of the reel, it will not work. The other thing I've seen is one person saying, one, t one tail mill magnet, place it inside here, and that's going to slow you down perfectly. So let's prove if that works now. Let's check the spin on this. As you can see, it's having no effect whatsoever. One till 10 mil magnet will not slow that down at all. It's just having no effect. So we can take that out, that magnet, put that back in and give it another spin. And as you can see, it's just the same. There's not slowing anything down. But what I've found is, 
that ball bit in there, if you take two 10mm times 2mm rear air magnets and place them there, you find where the other one is. Magnets are a nightmare, I'd like to stick to anything. So if you place two, so that would be, to make this work, you'd need 10mm times 4mm 52 rear earth magnet. Place that back in now. Now, now it's slowing the reel down. So you can mag it on this side statically. And that works quite well. So the size of the magnet has to be a lot bigger than what people are talking about. So it's 10 mil times 4 mil. That's the magnet you're after to make this work. So we'll do two spool comparisons. One with this in and then one with one mag in. And we'll see what the difference is. So some people are saying one 10 mil magnet in here times 2 mil will slow the reel down. I don't believe it does at all. I've got no brake blocks in here whatsoever. Let's give this a spin. As you can see, that's still just as fast as it was before. It's just far too fast. It's having no effect whatsoever on the reel. So now if we place two, two 10 mil magnets, which would make it 10 times four mil into the same position. And we'll try this now and see how much it slowed the reel down. As I said, there were no brake blocks in here, so this will just be the magnet all by itself. And now we end up with a reel that's a lot more user friendly. And that's with no brake blocks in at all. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to test this and give it a good cast. The problem is, have I slowed it down too much? It's certainly going to be a lot more controllable like this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it with just the magnets in. I'm going to test one with magnets and the two red blade blocks in. So you can static mag these, but you're going to need a 10 times 4 mil magnet to slow it down. And as you can see now, it's just a much more controllable reel. I think that'll be fine for casting, probably like that, even without the red brake box. But I think what I do now is that's how you slow down. It's a much more controllable, user-friendly reel. So what I'm going to do with this, just to take it out for the practice on the beach, I'm going to put the smaller red brake box in and leave the two mags in. I'm going to glue them in position as well. You will have to do that. But you can test it first, see how you feel before you put any glue to your reels. But that to me, that's much more controllable. And I can also adjust the tension cap now to get a little bit more speed out of it. So I feel I'm in control of that reel now. So that's a big thumbs up for the static mag for me. I think as well with most of these reels, like the Pen 525 for instance, or the Pen Fathom, you usually set your mag and you leave it like that. You, you find your happy medium with the reel. But that to me now is a much more controllable reel. So let's get down the beach and uh, let's give it a few test casts. So I'll just keep backing this tension screw off until I find where the reel's comfortable. I think I can go a bit faster, but very, very smooth cast so far. I'm very happy.